Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Autogafool. This is the brand new Renault Clio. Now in its fifth generation since 1990, it has sold over 15 million units. It will be quite hard to overstate the importance of this car to Renault. Not only is it Renault's most popular car, but it's also France's most popular car. It now consists of 100% new parts within its design. Does all of it add up to the same magic that's made Clio so popular? Let's take a closer look and find out. Given that every single component part of this car is completely new, it is very impressive how much of the design characteristic and the DNA of the Clio has managed to remain within this car. That said, it looks much more assertive and sculptural, and nowhere is that more visible than the redesign of the front. Look at the accents that the car now has, the way that this bonnet is cut into for the large Renault logo, the way that we have these dramatic sweeps down into this small grille, and the bumper at the bottom making it look much, much more dynamic, contemporary and fresh than its predecessor. So okay, the Clio is not exactly the most exciting car, but one of the reasons that I like it is the same reason that everybody else likes it. It really is a lot of fun and a lot of car at a very reasonable price point. That said, obviously the change in the way that car design works means that we're all a little bit more demanding as consumers than maybe we used to be. And if there's been one criticism that you hear more than any other of the previous generation of Clio, it's that the design was getting a little bit stale. Well, I don't think at all that that's a criticism you can make of the front of this car. It's very dynamic, it's very individualistic, but you know what? It still says Clio. Coming around to the side and that sporty dynamism continues. Just look at the way this headlight wraps through into the side with the accent line for the indicator cutting in lower down to the bumper. It really makes the whole front of this car feel very much included in the side design as well. As you come slightly further back, that sporty feeling continues. We've got a really nice accent line that starts off in the front here and gently fades away as it comes through into the door panel. I think they've done a huge amount with the design of this car to make it pop and feel fresh. As you come further back and of course the windows taper off, there is very definitely something that's reminiscent of the design of new line SUVs for this car. If you have a look at the way they sit large on the road, but they sculpturally use their windows in order to emphasize their presence. It's really quite visually surprising. You can get away with that much trickery in a small car as well, but I think Renault have pulled it off. This really does look amazingly dynamic for a small vehicle. Coming through around to the rear portion of the car, we have an echo of the way that the front headlights work when we're looking at the rear lights. They're also wrapped into the side, again, to give more dynamism to the look and feel of this design. We walk round to the back. I'm always making Thomas suffer when we do motor show exhibits because it's so hard working with the other people to get the shots that we want. Look at this, again, very unique styling, lovely flaring and arches, it's very sculptural. It really does feel designed. Now, if I sound like I'm going on a little bit about how much I like this car, I must confess, small cars really work for me. Why? Because they're affordable and normal people can buy them. So when Renault say they're launching a new Clio, well, you know, you have to hold your breath and hope that it's going to deliver quite what you want. Visually, aesthetically, I think this design is great. It feels contemporary, it feels fresh, it feels sporty, and I challenge anyone to say that they're not going to feel more than happy pulling up in one of these. Let's take a closer look under the bonnet and see what's changed there. That's if I can get in. Okay, well I'm not immediately convinced that I'm in love with the bonnet catch, but hopefully the engines will be good enough that you won't be needing to do that too often. 
The engine startup begins with a three cylinder engine, one litre, 75 horsepower with 95 newton metres of torque. That's going to come in with a five speed gearbox. Then you can take it up a little bit with a turbocharged one litre unit. That's a TCE, 99 horsepower, 160 newton metres of torque. And I think right at the top of the line, you're going to be able to get a 1.3 litre petrol, four cylinder, 129 brake horsepower, and 240 newton metres of torque. So that ought to give you more than a little bit of fun in a small runaround. Now, don't forget, this car has lost a lot of weight from what came before. So you ought to be able to see more impressive fuel efficiency numbers. Now, there are two schools of thoughts about small cars. You either want a beast of an engine in there that nobody sees coming, or you want to go with efficiency. Now, this is the most popular car in France. It's very popular right throughout Europe. So I think what I'm going to be most interested initially to be taking a look at are the realistic, efficient engines. What do I mean by that? Well, it's always a bit of a dice up if you go with the most efficient engine because you really do feel the lack of power. But in a car of this size, I'm really keen to see how that technology has come on. We should be able to be getting some very good numbers out of this car. Can't wait to find out. If a lot's changed outside, I'm pretty sure a lot's changed inside as well. So let's take a look and see if they've managed to pull off the same tricks. Well, I always think interior design is one of the hardest things for small cars to get right because they simply don't have the money to spend on the materials. So there are always going to be compromises. Clearly, you're going to be getting a lot of hard plastic, but I like the contrasting effect here. And these entirely functional looking buttons are really giving you good access to the controls without making you feel that you're experiencing too much plastic. I like this little detail on the edge. It just makes it feel a little bit more quality. So I think nothing mind blowing about the door design, but have a look in that cockpit. Wow. Whether you like that or not, you certainly can't complain that Renault haven't innovated when it comes to what they're doing with the interior on this new Clio. My goodness, that is really a radical change from what came before. I'm just gonna hop in and see how the driving experience feels. Thomas, you're doing an amazing job of uh, managing to cope with all of my really difficult demands while we're filming this. There we go, okay. So the seat feels pretty standard, much as expected. If you're used to putting up a lot of miles in the predecessor, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed or particularly blown away by your seating comfort. What has changed very much is your depth within the car. You might remember me mentioning when we were outside that a lot of the design cues look to me as if they've been borrowed from the SUV playbook. Well, the driving experience has obviously reached into the same manual. Small cars are never gonna drop in popularity, but the way that we relate to them does change over time. So here I feel very deep into this vehicle for a smaller car. The dashboard actually feels very high. I'm five feet 10 or 178 centimeters. As you can see, I have plenty of headroom here. I would say a good two inches spare between the top of my head and the roof. I have a long torso. So realistically, if you're about six foot two, I would say you're gonna still be comfortable in this car. Now, Let's take a look at this dashboard layout. Thomas, you okay? Ah, Thomas says good. So we have now a fully digital cockpit. Really, that's delivering us the latest of Renault's onboard software. Ah, well, you know, it depends which manufacturers you like more than others, but I think this is definitely the way that most of them are headed. It's not completely digital. It only stretches, if you can see as far as my fingers go, because of the contrast, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, you might not necessarily be able to see that these are just lit features on either side. The digital component is just the panel in the middle. Now, that is obviously not the key talking point that you need to notice when you're looking at this dashboard. Here it is. Now, whether this is gonna be your taste or not, it's clearly the future in terms of how cars are interacting. It does sit very obviously in the middle of the dashboard. So I think it's going to be important that you like that visually as a feature. 
I'm really struggling to understand how you could have integrated it any better at this price point. That's the issue. Once you start wanting to embed displays into dashboards, things start getting very expensive very quickly. So although this wouldn't be my first choice, and I'm not in love with the styling, when I consider the compromise that's involved in making a smaller car, I think I can live with it. It does look fresh, it does look different, it does look energetic. So in keeping with the design, at least it's different. These controls are all nice and easy to access and all of the knobs feel of good quality and they are well positioned. Further down, I'm very happy to see that we've kept some features which for me in a small car are a must, an aux in for the stereo, that's still great. Two USB charge points, that's brilliant. And I'm very happy to see we still have a 12 volt charge. And look at this. You would find a lot of larger cars that don't have as generous of a space to park your mobile phone. So that's nicely carried out. I think that I've got enough room here to do everything I want to. This new design of gear stick, well, I'm not 100% convinced by this accent line around it, but it does make it feel a little young, a little fresh. Gear stick feels nice and solid. Coming further back, lots more hard plastic, but as you would expect. Cup holders, yes, we even have two. Again, for a small car, that's a nice feature and a movable armrest with a fairly decent size. If you can see my arm, Thomas, that's a pretty decent size storage area for the middle. So they've used their space really well, I think. And there is plenty of room in this small car to enjoy your driving experience. Once we get to the back door, obviously we find another one of those nice design features. That feels nicely made. So not only is it a little talking point, I think for people who aren't familiar with the car, but it's also kind of fun to use. It just makes you have a little extra special in a cheaper car. Can you realistically sit four grown-ups in it? Well, let's take a seat and find out. Well, it is a small car and I think Renault have made good use of the interior room. For me, for a small car, I always want the priority in the front. After all, even the most busy parent is not driving around with all of their children all of the time. So the driver's experience really is paramount for me. I have enough space back here. I could certainly use this to nip in and out of town and get a lift where I need to go. Slightly tempting is that when you look at the big visual display in the front, I can imagine the children finding it very hard to understand that they can't use that as a TV. <laughs> so, connectivity back here. If they can't use the main screen, can they connect their iPads? Well, okay, every small car is going to have some compromise, and this is where we run out of money. There are no charge points back here. I think it would have been a nice addition to have at least put one in. After all, this is a car that's going to feature a lot of children they are going to be mad that they can't watch TV on that screen. Head height, well, it's not bad. I think really this is a runabout. I have plenty of room back here. And even if you're a larger person, I still think you're going to find enough comfort that you could possibly reasonably expect in a small car. Materials, well, they're all nice and easy to wipe clean. I think that's probably about the fairest thing I can say about them. They've done as much as they can visually to make them look interesting and not simply an afterthought. But you know, you have to have a realistic expectation, I think. And this more than meets mine. Again, the use of the materials is nice. We've even got some soft touch happening here. Very practical, very easy to keep clean and still young, fresh and funky. What do you think? You have to really like the way that this rear camera has been integrated into the logo. So it's very discreet, but nicely placed. But does leave you wondering, how do I get into the boot? Well, aha, it's underneath the lip. Well, that's fine. I like the way it's tucked away visually, but obviously I think you're going to get your hand more than a little bit dirty on that spot in the winter. So I'm not sure if there are any plans to add keyless entry at this stage. I suspect not, but I think you'll just have to get used to touching that without touching too much of anything else. Now, we have a variable load system here. So if you want as close entry as you can get for your loads. Obviously you have this shelf, but you also have this lower area as well. And that gives us a load space of 330 to 391 liters of load, which I think is actually pretty great for this car because a lot of changes have taken place here. The overall car is one centimeter shorter than its predecessor. That's about that. So it's good to see that we don't have any compromise in terms of boot space. The interior room has really been used well here. This car standardly is a city runabout, so what's most likely to be going back here? Well, of course, shopping. Well, look at that. You could fit an awful lot of shopping back here and 
children's equipment and the odd bit of tools underneath and still you're not going to need to worry and it's been nicely thought out. Look at the way that that just holds itself in place while you're accessing the lower level and then easily just pops back. Two thumbs up from me, that's a nice bit of thinking on a boot I think. So that's our first look at the brand new Renault Clio. What do we think? Well, the new styling I think is absolutely superb. It really sets the car off and suggests to you that it's ready for the future. Hopefully the French market's going to like it as much as I do. I think probably it will. I really like the slight reduction in the length. I think that adds to its dynamism and the massive saving of weight that they've put into the car should be returning some impressive fuel efficiency figures as well. The interior is a nice refresh. I'm not quite sure that I'm in love with the way that the infotainment system's been integrated, but it certainly makes the car look modern today. Question is, how will it appear throughout its life? Well, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer on that to find out. But of course, the proof of the pudding is always in the drive. If this is going to be as dynamic and sporty as the appearance, then I think we have an awful lot to look forward to. If you have any comments or questions, pop them below. Please subscribe, and we hope we'll see you again soon.